नमस्ते गुड इवनिंग दिस इज डॉक्टर अपर्णा आई एम एन आयुर्वेदिक साइकोथेरापिस्ट आई एक्ट एज अ कैटलिस्ट टू योर इमोशनल हीलिंग जर्नी सो आई एम एन इमोशनल हीलिंग सिनर्जिस्ट आई एम अ मेडिकल राइटर एंड एन इन्फोप्रीनर सो in my pursuit to address promote and propagate ayurveda and psychotherapy globally i come up with discussions or speak on topics related to ayurveda mental health psychotherapy and uh, psychology related topics i also uh, re- book do book reviews on neuroscience uh and self help mental health books so um, in continuation to the previous session where we were discussing on ayurveda and ayurvedic concept of mind and how it is relevant to today's modern uh, world so today we are going to discuss interdependence of mind and body that means psychosomatic interdependence so we are also going to discuss functions of mind and modern correlation so um usually i very frequently uh, i get asked on when i always speak about uh, you know uh, brain and psychotherapy people ask me about ayurvedic aspect of mind so here is the series on that if you want uh, to watch the previous session that is available both in linkedin and youtube so this is the second session on um ayurvedic concept of mind so without uh, you know delaying let's get started so see when i talk of interdependence of body and mind that means psychosomatic interdependence so what is that that means body and mind both are interrelated and interdependent uh if you have uh, watched the previous session you would have known that we discussed on body gut axis neuroendocrine axis so how um, mind is related to the digestive system how mind is related to the reproductive system how mind is related to the sleep so here in ayurveda the prevention and maintenance of health is given prime importance in ayurveda after that curative aspect so prevention and maintenance so for that both physical and mental factors are equally important because the mind acts in conformity with the body and the body acts in conformity with the mind that means the body follows the mind and the mind follows the body this is you know said by acharya charaka um in ayurveda so these two the body and the mind both combinedly are the sites for happiness and misery sukha and dukha so that means any somatic disorder affects the mind and any mental disorder influences the body that means body influences mind and mind influences body so therefore body and mind cannot be separated from each other this is the approach of ayurveda ayurveda sees the body as a whole so holistic approach to the preservation of health and management of the disease is essential according to ayurveda so now the concept is we had also briefed on this see mind is not visible any kind of perception and functioning of sensory or motor organs is indicative of presence of mind <coughs> so without mind executing as a mediator between the external as well as internal 
environment soul does not acquire any perception so ayurveda strongly proposes mind that is manas as a chief convener of all external and internal stimuli you know to pro- to body and a mediator for motor reactions to all these stimuli so that means in simple if i have to simplify this so if manas is not doing its duty that means if mind is not doing its duty nothing is perceived we cannot perceive anything so um, mind is the seat of pleasure sukha and dukha so understanding the concept of mind is important because balanced state of mind is the ultimate source of health so here according to ayurveda mind manas soul atma body sharira are the tripod on which the life depends so both body and mind are the resort of pleasure and disorders so here this is a, as per ayurveda so what is what does modern science have modern medicine has to say about this so modern science has started now to emphasize on the concept of mind and psychosomatic disorders in uh, it has started it from the last century so but however ayurveda has realized the importance of concept of mind in maintaining health or individual health of an individual thousands of years ago the same thing ayurveda has said thousands of years ago so here as i said mind is a mediator for both the sensory organs and the motor organs so in ayurveda the sensory uh, sense organs are called gnanendriya and motor organs are called karmendriya so manas in ayurveda is called ubhayendriya because it is the mediator for both uh, the you know um uh, senses and the sensory perception and motor perception so this is also you know um this also can be correlated to modern science so because modern science also believes the same so mind is stimulating sensory organs to perceive knowledge and it controls actions of karmendriya after analyzing the knowledge obtained by sensory organs so i will explain with an example see um when we eat a chocolate that means um for example when we eat chocolate so when when a person is eating chocolate the person perceives a sweet taste of that chocolate so according to ayurveda it is the mind which helps us understand perceive and analyze the sweet taste of chocolate so mind uh, if i have to define mind ayurveda say says it is ava buddhi that means knowledge or understanding that means entity which makes a person knowledgeable is manas or mind so so when we talk of the characteristic features of uh, you know mind what are uh, how, how is mind perceived according to ayurveda so to perceive the knowledge or not to perceive the knowledge indicates the presence or absence of mind so we can say presence of mind when we can perceive the knowledge and absence of mind when we are not able to perceive the knowledge so this is a characteristic feature of mind as i already said mind is a mediator for both sensory perception and motor perception so mind is called ubhayendriya in ayurveda that means it is a for it is a mediator for both ubhaya is both so mind stimulates sensory organs to perceive knowledge and it controls actions of 
karmendriya that is motor motor organs or motor perception after analyzing the knowledge obtained by sensory organs so um, i have uh, discussed uh, n number of times regarding the sharirika dosha that means vata pitta and kapha according to ayurveda the physical sharira dosha like vata pitta and kapha carry various functions related to the psyche so the sharirika doshas the vata pitta kapha also are involved in uh, functions related to the mind that is psyche so these sharira doshas also directly influence the psyche and ayurveda also believes that vata is considered as the primary dosha to influence mental activities so vata is the controller vata is the motivator and vata is the regulator of all the mental activities so when we talk of characteristic feature of mind next comes the karma the functions of mind what are the functions of mind that means manas according to ayurveda plays a crucial role in bridging the gap between atma self and the sharira body so mind acts as the central processor you know influencing how we perceive information how we interpret information how we interact with the world around us this is all done by uh, you know mind so it acts as a central processing unit a central processor so understanding mind's functions helps us dive deeper into the mind body connection so what does it do in ayurveda it is called indriya abhigraha that means manas controls all the sensory and motor faculties of that means mind is the prime motivator and controller of all the sense organs the sense uh, the sensory and the motor organs work only in the presence of an active mind so the mind is the driving force for the perception of external world to cognitive and you know conative senses so here basically indriya abhigraha is mind controls all the sensory and motor faculties next function of brain is swasya nigraha that means self restraint or self control so mind controls and restrains itself from harmful activities that means mind is a regulator or and coordinator of its own activities so this function of self restraint is essential for in preservation of health and management of diseases that means the unwholesome or wholesome regimen is followed or unfollowed by an individual due to self restraining capacity of the mind that means you can um, you know follow a healthy diet and a healthy lifestyle if you have a self restraint of mind or you can follow an, an unhealthy diet and unhealthy lifestyle if you do not have a self restraint so here the conquest of mind that is sattva vajaya therapy that is what i do so sattva vajaya therapy here is you know restraining the mind from harmful objects this is the the traditional form of psychotherapy so sattva vajaya chikitsa involves or includes training of the mind to avoid harmful things or harmful objects so uh, meditation mindfulness exercises pranayama yoga pra- all these practices so th- these are involved in self restraint next function of brain is uha uha means hypothesis or logical interpretation so mind can postulate and a uh, hypothesis and interpret it logically so how the strength of the mind is applied to innovate discover 
create new things so all this is we are able to you know innovate things discover things create new things because of the mind so mind is that is because of the logical interpretation of mind that means mind is logically applied to make a conjuncture about the possible outcome in a given situation so the next function of mind is vichara that means consideration and thinking so vichara means mind can think and analyze between right and wrong correct or incorrect useful or harmful things so the mind can justify reasons a certain possibilities seek proof or evidence so all this mind can do you know the justification we do and uh, you, we um, come to a we analyze between the right and wrong and we seek proof or uh, evidence everything is because of the consideration and thinking ability of the mind next function of the mind is dhyaya so that is called attention and meditation so attending various sensory objects and processing them to acquire knowledge so concentration and meditation the focus is due to the mind focus and you know the processing of the sensory perception to acquire knowledge that is an essential function of the mind so here sankalpa the mind can resolve a situation or take a willful decision sankalpa is a resolution or taking a decision the ability to take a decision is the function of the mind so determination towards a goal that is also you know is a, a function of mind so the intellect that is buddhi it is called buddhi in ayurveda is superior cognitive faculty over the mind so it acts further on the raw data submitted by the mind then that means whatever the data mind submits the buddhi the intellect is a superior cognitive faculty over the mind so ayurveda also uh, you know defines the relationship between manas and buddhi so what is buddhi after what manas does it it perceives the uh, information the sensory information into a information and what buddhi does is decision making capacity of an individual is called buddhi so how uh, the buddhi decides so there are three factors involved here dhi dhriti and smriti so dhi is deciding and analyzing so the analyzing part is called dhi so what is right and what is wrong is analyzed by dhi that is uh, the analysis part or uh, is done by dhi next is dhriti dhriti is the power which controls the mind from doing the wrong thing and smriti is to recall past experiences that is called smriti so three factors which are involved in a uh, buddhi are in decision making are dhi dhriti and smriti so um these are uh, this is uh, about the functions of the manas and um, you know uh, it's uh, and the relation between manas and buddhi and uh, the interdependence of uh, manas and sharira that it means the body and the mind so in the next session we will see uh, you know some of the functions of manas and its uh, correlation to modern psychology so that is it for today's session let me know what you think of the session in the comment section below and if you have any queries please do ask in the comment section thank you namaste for today